shows how much love you have for the nation of Israel. The, the I'm, sovereign nation of Israel. I'm just, I'm going to let people drink this in. Because there's a lot of people will tell you to pull together, to move as a unit, that we have to fall in line behind Trump. I, I, you know what I'm calling? The Aaron McIntyres of this world, who, who are paid by the blaze, will tell you that Trump is an anti-establishment candidate and that you can believe him and the regime doesn't really want... Look at... Look, like, I'm sorry, but look at this. But don't you understand? He's, he's a renegade actor. The RNC doesn't look, really control him. Look at it. I know. Just look, drink it in. <sighs> Just look at it. I know I will not fall in line. I, I'm sorry, but look at it. I mean, is nobody seeing this? Is nobody seeing any of this? I, I, I know people are fist pumping uh, because of the, the current thing, but have you noticed that nothing has changed? Has it dawned on you that things are simply continuing as they always have done? <laughs> don't, don't you recognise that somebody shot Trump in the ear with a two two rifle? That changed the world. It was the shot heard around the earth. People have all uh, people are already forgetting about it. People have already stopped talking about it. I would actually maybe not say that people have forgotten about it, but people are now approaching it as if it's historical. Yes, and they aren't talking about it as if it's still relevant to the current moment. No, but that it was relevant to a previous moment, and because people have the wrong idea about it. People have got a real fucking craw up their ass about it. And I can understand why they do to some regards. But, I mean, I, like when people start writing about they shot at Trump, but they were aiming for you and crap like that. I'm sorry, but that's a fucking Q post. Yes, it is. Um, our take is that it doesn't matter. It's like JFK. No. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll repeat that later, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, this is what I put on. <laughs> I, I, I don't care. I put this on Twitter maybe but two days after it that, Nothing changes. My worldview and my understanding of where the political sort of events are moving towards hasn't changed. I have no sympathy for Trump or Trumpism, and I think the people who are getting behind it because they think it's an energised base, just like 2016, are going to find that they are going to work directly against their own interest once again. Well, there's been some real... There's been a real shift, and it feels like a shift that was not pre if not prepared for, then at least uh, you workshop very quickly afterwards, in that we now have Trump the unifier, Trump the consensus candidate. Oh, yes. As the spectator says, which I've singled out the spectator because they have two of the best examples of this, but he's been everywhere. Yes. There's been a wave new of these. statesmen and all sorts. All kinds of people. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into a new statesman in a little bit. But here we go. We're all today, we're all MAGA. Well, what was she saying in here? What's Kate Andrews got to say? When Ronald, Ronald Reagan, Reagan was shot on 30th March 1981, his wound was not immediately noticed. It wasn't until he started bleeding from the mouth that the car was diverted from the White House to the hospital. I'm not even sure if that's entirely true. The story that goes, uh, the story goes that upon arrival, the president said to the surgeons, I just hope you're Republicans. A doctor is said to have replied, Today, Mr. President, we are all Republicans. Bullshit. <laughs> Let's hope this anecdote is never debunked. It's too good a story about Americans who do not hesitate to put their country before the politics that so often plague. You know this group of people who actually wanted to like take your kids away and rape them? <laughs> the attack on Reagan was the last known weird clarifier, assassination attempt on a president. Until a few hours ago, the shots fired at President Trump at a rally in Pennsylvania left him bleeding from the head. Two people have died. We don't know the full details of the shooting yet, but from what can be seen on the video footage, it's clear the former president is very lucky to be alive. There is only one appropriate response to such horrors. Today, we are all MAGA. Where we go one, we go all. Woo! The hand Trump, the unifier? Uh, There's been loads of this. He, the, he, he at least took a day to write this one, so hopefully the writing is when, somewhat less... We're harsh. not going to talk about like the cancelling of Jack Black and all that. We're not going to talk about the whole right-wing cancel culture debate because that is such low pro feed stuff <laughs> that I actually feel kind of sick looking at it. Our problem with that <laughs> is not that... Our enemies are being cancelled. It's that our enemies are being cancelled by weird Jews like the Libs of Tibet. Well, it's not people. even just. It's not, they're not. What does it do? 
Yeah. What 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 happens if yo oh, well okay you're gonna go out and own the libs. We get to we get to play council now. Yes. We, we get to play with it. It's, it's our, our time. Turn. Our, our, our point isn't that, uh, you know, yes, it is okay when we do it, but can we do something uh, a bit more useful than uh, social media cancellations, no, please? It's only okay when we in big fucking capital letters do it. <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't understand but, why but, people are so stupid. We, I just can't. We, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't debate because the time for divisive conversations and being overtly political is over. We've all got to get under Trump and recognise that political violence is wrong <laughs> and that democracy is the way forward. Ah, uh, well, of course, but first of all, we must we must talk about the fact that, yes, um, uh, thank you, Peter, for the five pounds. Sorry, I just would like to say before I make this point, uh, Sneed. Um, <laughs> I, I might as well, I enjoy hate reading some of these. Donald Trump has been revising his big convention speech in light of his brush with death at the weekend. I basically had a speech that was an unbelievable rip roarer, he told interviewers yesterday. It was brutal, really good, really tough. I threw it out. I think it'd be very bad if I got up and started going wild about how horrible everybody is and how corrupt and crooked, even if it's true. Had this not happened, we had a speech that was pretty well set, that was extremely tough. Now we have a speech that is more unifying. Unifying. Trump, the unifier in chief, as many enemies would scoff at the thought, but one of the reasons Trump is such an effective political campaigner is that he has strong, intuitive sense of what others are thinking. He knows that a news event as dramatic and disturbing as Saturday's assassination attempt has the power to change an election. And he knows that acts of violence lead to hopes for peace. Change an he was always going to fucking... Anyway, we've got all the weird endorsements. we got uh, Amber Rose, the slut walk person, yeah. former adult star. That video of that bird in the red dress fingering herself at the RNC thing and whatever else people were posting about all week. Uh, Elon Musk, no one's surprised. It's kind of broken cover, but it's all... It's like a weird cascade. Well, he has also basically said he's going to put his hand up, and or shall I say, he's going to put his hand in his pocket and find about forty million dollars the Trump campaign as well. Which I must reiterate again: if you are on Twitter and you are receiving monetization for pro-Trump posts, maybe even at a favourable rate, and Elon Musk is also the owner of that site as a major shareholder, and also endorsing Trump's campaign and donating to it. At some point, there's got to be a conflict of interest there in some regards. Uh, again, it's very much the same mode by which all other social media companies oh, do it. Oh, of course. I just think it's very interesting that it's finally happening to quote-unquote us. Well, it's it's not. It's happening with them. Mm, yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, we have uh, people celebrate. I don't know why people are celebrating Mark Zuckerberg smelling the political wind and going, look, I'm not, I'm not a woke lizard man. I'm cool, guys. Woke's gone away, and I've shifted with the paradigm. It's. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna go. On a, I guess I am. But people who are going, yes, we're winning, is the woke is like really cartoonishly, obviously stuffed deeper into the box. Are the stupidest. I'm sorry. All the most disingenuous people. But with Jews, you win. win. Uh, but <laughs> it's just yes. Th- this this is the post woke world. This is Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. And Jamie oh, he, Diamond. He and... called Trump a badass, guys. We're winning. Uh, we're, when Mark Zuckerberg is talking positively about you, you should be very afraid. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, it's so obvious. It's so obvious what's being done here, and yet people are still going out and going, we're winning. We well, of course you're winning. Woke. You, we when you, won. When you have the possibility... shifted the Overton window. Sorry. Um, when you have the possibility of Treasury Secretary Larry Fink on the cards. Oh. Now, that's some real winning. Oh, God, is that who's been floated? Yeah, it's either Jamie Dimon of <laughs> JP Morgan or uh, Larry Fink, possibly. Ugh, oh, right, okay. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. But surely well, this must mean something. If if all the big names in the billionaire scene from Silicon Valley are turning around and endorsing Donald Trump, this must mean that change is afoot. 
Well, um, we'll quickly talk about JD Vance. There's a couple of bits here you want to read. Yeah, we'll scroll down to just... Uh, so there's a brief bit of an interview, and I think for the sake of the fact that what we are talking about here is the endless conversation. You know, we are, as they say in the top of the Times of Israel here, Israel at war, day 290. <laughs> a never-ending war either. <laughs> Because wars, like conversations, can't end, can they? What day are one of the Ukraine war now? <laughs> God. Have we reached a thousand days yet? But I yes, don't think we have. There was there was a particularly interesting section of this here, because we all know what JD Vance is like anyway. I would hope he's part of the Theosphere, and he's associated with the Palantir guys that run around basically going, "Well, we want to stop terrorism in the West so that the Jews don't get showed." But anyway. To quote J.D. Vance in this Times of Israel piece, If we're going to support Israel, as I think that we should, we have to articulate a reason why it's in our best interest, the Republican Senator continued. A big part of the reason why Americans care about Israel is because we are still the largest Christian majority country in the world. Which means that a majority of citizens of this country think that their saviour, and I count myself a Christian, was born and died and resurrected in that narrow little strip of territory on the Mediterranean. The idea that there is ever going to be an American foreign policy that doesn't care a lot about that slice of the world is preposterous. The conversation around that issue does not even warrant being entered into. <laughs> Here we go. I mean, here's, I, here's David M. Friedman. Congratulations to J.D. Vance on his selection as President Trump's running mate. A powerful, inspiring ticket if there ever was one. I mean, I, I want to maybe say as, a, <laughs> as an aside that I know we, we have in and out through a lot of our stuff in the past mentioned Jewish organisations and explicitly political ones and the fact that it operates through their in-group preference, blah, 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 blah. And it has, I think, more recently become a larger part of our conversation or a conversation, or our presentations, or whatever you want to call them. Because fundamentally, it is a block of people who are making a tactical move. Yes. And these endorsements of Trump, J.D. Vance being a cool BAP reading uh, dissident rightist on the Twitters, this is a fucking fugazi. Yes. And if you can't see that there is a certain subset of people who have decided that, oh, we really fucked up the Western world, and we want to maintain our position within it. Hmm, maybe we should pretend to be conservatives now, guys. Uh, just, it's just all so tiresome, but it, you must keep your eyes away from the endless conversation and on where the power is. Yes. It is extremely obvious who people's patrons are. The, the RNC has been, a, has been able to be cartoonishly, cartoonishly, Tunishly uh, pro Israel uh, under the cover of the unity candidate Trump. <clears throat> no one is talking about this. Everyone is talking about the fact that he is in some sort of anti establishment insurgent fired up by an attempt in his life. Whereas the opposite is, is taking place. The, the news is, is rhythmically drumming to people Trump is coming, Trump yes. is coming, Trump I mean, is coming, yeah. Trump is coming. The other end of it as well that you see from certain people is they pull this cope out of the hat that, well, you've obviously got to be a Zionist to be on the seat of power in America. And it's like, well... Why? Yeah, exactly. Why can't the conversation ask that question? Yes, why can the endless conversation never ask, why are you forced to be a Zionist? 